believe in you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus showed himself again to his disciples. It was by the Sea of Tiberias, and it happened like this. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two more of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. They replied, We will come with you. They went out and got into the boat, but caught nothing that night. It was night by now, and there stood Jesus on the shore though the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus called out, Have you caught anything, friends? And when they answered no, he said, Throw the net out of the starboard and you will find something. So they dropped the net, and there were so many fish that they could not haul it in. The disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. At these words, it is the Lord, Simon Peter, who had practically nothing on, wrapped his cloak round him and jumped into the water. The other disciples came on in the boat, towing the net and the fish. They were only about a hundred yards from land. As soon as they came ashore, they saw that there was some bread there and a charcoal fire with fish cooking on it. Jesus said, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dropped the net to the shore, full of big fish, 153 of them. And in spite of there being so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples was bold enough to ask, Who are you? They knew quite well it was the Lord. Jesus then stepped forward, took the bread, and gave it to them, and the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus showed himself to the, to the disciples after rising from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In this octave of Easter, we reflected on the nature of our faith, modelled by the nature of dreams and our relationship and our effort, uh, our relationship to them and our effort to interpret them. The resurrection is about understanding. It is about interpreting what uh, is going on in this very strange dreamlike situation. When Jesus appears freely and disappears, one moment the disciples recognize him, the other moment they don't, and like in today's scene, they recognize him, but they, they have to they have to learn how to communicate with the risen Lord. Um, from Mapping the Power's book, The Hidden Lives of Dreams, um, I found an interesting uh, part about health, health which healthy sleep time can bring to all of us. Though it's a sketchy idea, but the significance of ha having enough sleep in order to stay healthy 
uh, can be a good model to the significance of uh, having enough time with God, having prime time with God. She highlights that research confirms that the dream period or the sleeping period during the night is the ground of the recreation and regeneration of, uh, of the brain and all our mental and intellectual faculties. This is a vital time spent in sleep uh, following the natural rhythm uh, of uh, the daylight, the change of daylight and night time. Spending prime time with God is similar in terms of significance. Spending time with God, with the risen Lord, um, having time for our own soul is the very ground of our balanced life. It generates energies which otherwise uh, cannot be attained. And the interesting bit is just the, the banal uh, uh, facts which he mentions that every cell in our bodies respond to the cycle of day and night, sleep and waking, as does all life on earth, hardwired to respond with extraordinary biological sensitivity to the daily cycle of the planet's 24-hour rhythm. Living close to nature, we follow the natural pattern of sleep in accordance with our internal body clock. Obviously, with modern times, this cycle is interrupted. We lost our relationship with nature and we deprive ourselves of sleep. And she quotes uh, uh, research the consequences of it. And the first point I'd like to make is that uh, there is a natural cycle of the praying soul. Uh, there is a natural cycle when we rest, when we do our day-to-day -day businesses, when we, when we use our reason, but there is a natural timing, the evolutionary forces that determine our sleep-wake cycle. And it's proven that it can lead to seriously detrimental, uh, it, that it, it, it proves to be seriously detrimental to public health. In 2007, the World Health Organization uh, came out with a publication um, and they named this sleep disruption as a possible cause of breast and prostate cancer. I'm just quoting a few banal facts of, uh, of pragmatic research. Work-related sleep, dis uh, sleep disruption has been linked to coronary heart disease. In 2016, the Royal Society for Public Health noted that by the year 2000, sleep disturbance had already been identified in the United Kingdom as the most common expression of mental ill health for men and women over the previous 15 years. And uh, the society published an eye-opening list of risks associated with sleep, de sleep deprivation with no less than a total of 36 potential ill effects linked respectively to our physical and mental health. 
In addition to increased risk of cancer and heart disease, loss of sleep weakens the immune system, causes metabolic imbalances, and adds to weight gain. The Royal Society for Public Health recommends the inclusion of sleep health in the school curriculum and the creation of a slumber number, a national helpline for sleep advice. The second point uh, I'd like to make is that we should really take seriously uh, the parallel interruption of not sleep pattern and not uh, sleep life, but the interruption of our prayer life. In modernity, it seems that we are paying a bitter price for this loss of dedicating prime time to our soul and God. Um, It's just a, just a thought that occurred to me uh, related to this, that um, the, in the background of a decline of religious attendance, in the very background of, uh, of people giving up practicing their religion and detach themselves from organized religion, uh, Perhaps in the background, in, 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 in its background, we can find that we, we, we have pushed uh, our boundaries to the extreme, uh, uh, to the extremes. Uh, what do I mean? That um, in the old days, in the 1970s, 80s, an average child went to bed between 7 and 8 o'clock. Adults, most of them, uh, they were asleep between 8 and 9 o'clock, following the natural uh, rhythm. With television and other activities, and it, should be, it could be an endless list, this changed. And I just wonder, as a question mark in this Easter, Easter octave, that whether or losing the sense of the sacred and uh, losing the desire for God to be with God following the natural cycle of our prayer life, uh, that it may have a connection with our going to bed very late uh, when we not simply don't unwind ourselves three hours before going to bed, but we don't finish our day, or start our day, uh, in the presence of God. Um, our gadgets and our crazy lifetime going to bed, the average population goes to bed after 11 o'clock. So it, it means that we are losing a vital time for regeneration. And we should take it seriously. And my third very sketchy point is, that in order to regain this natural rhythm of our soul, um, joining in the Church's prayer life is vital, a very good way also. Uh, the morning prayer, the evening prayer, and the daily Eucharist um, can frame one's day and provide it with a rhythm which can be a ground for that prime time with God. And that can lead to both to a healthier relationship with God and ourselves uh, and, and our increased uh, desire uh, to live in the Christian community. And Easter octave, the week of uh, Easter, is, uh, is a very tangible experience that our Lord wants 
us to follow the pattern of his prayer life. Starting the day, sanctifying the day and completing our day in his presence. And perhaps we could call it a, a monastic discipline or the religious tradition, religious heritage in the church uh, centered on the set prayer times and uh, it's not a rapid science in our homes during the lockdown or after it hopefully we can engage with this natural life of the Christian community which is the natural rhythm and life of the Christian community from the onset throughout centuries.